Hello everyone, welcome to JG Chemistry. Guys, in today's video, we are going to see some problem and its solution of precipitation titration. If you want me to prepare any particular video on any topic, do write it in the comment section. And if you like my channel, do subscribe it and share it with your friends. Let's begin. So we'll see very first question. What are adsorption indicators? Give an example. So we'll see what is adsorption indicators. Basically, adsorption indicators are called like at equivalence point when the precipitate is going to form, you have a change in the color for the indicator. So basically the indicator is having a different color before precipitation and after precipitation it is going to show a different color. So let's see, fluorescein is the best example of adsorption indicator. So before precipitation, it is in solution in the form of yellowish green color. And once it is going to precipitate it with the silver as silver fluoride or fluorescein complex, it shows a red complex or red PPT. So the change in the color shows the completion of reaction and signals the end point. So this is a role of adsorption indicator and this is also called the Fazan's indicator. The next question is the filtration of silver chloride is essential during the Vollard method of estimation justified. So what is Vollard method? In this Vollard method, it uses the back titration with potassium thiocyanide for the determination of chloride, bromide and iodide in acidic solution. So what and why we need to filter the AgCl because it will react with the thiocyanide and will give you the diffuse end point. So basically we have to remove the silver chloride before we are going to titrate with the thiocyanide as a titrant. Otherwise it will interfere and will give you a diffuse end point. Next. What are the requirements of a reaction for adopting a precipitation titration? So we should know what are the requirements. First is precipitate must be practically insoluble. So this is the very first requirement. It should be insoluble. Precipitation must be rapid. And you should have a possible way to detect the equivalence point. The method based on the precipitation insoluble silver is known as argentometry titration. So if you are having argentometry titration, it means they are asking you the precipitation titration involving insoluble silver. Also, if you have halogen, which can be determined by the precipitation of the insoluble or sparingly soluble mercurous salt, it is called mercurometry. So these are certain condition or requirements for a reaction to adopt the precipitation titration. Next question, in what respect Fazan's method is superior to Volar method for determination of chloride? Basically, there are three methods. One is Mohr's method, second is Volar method and third is Fazan's method which is also called the adsorption method or adsorption indicator. Out of three, Volar method is used widely and here they are asking why the Fazan's method is superior to Vollard method. So first is the Fazan's method is involved the direct method of determination while we know Vollard method uses the back titration method. Second, Vollard titration uses the two standard solutions and a filtration step to remove the AgCl is required before titrating with excess of thiocyanide. So this is why the Fazan's method is superior over Volar method. Now, why does the charge on the surface of precipitate particle change sign at the end of a titration? What is the advantage of these observations? You will see. Let's say the example in the titration of chloride with silver plus. So there are two stages. One can be before the equivalence point. Before the equivalence point, you have excess of analyte, which is Cl minus. Ag plus is your titrant here. So what you have, you have Cl minus excess in the primary layer. So you have AgCl, which is precipitate. And since we have analyte Cl minus, which is going to be in excess, which is in anionic form. So this will attract the positive charge ions 
towards it. So this is before equivalence point. Now what is going to happen before beyond the equivalence point? Now beyond the equivalence point, you will be having excess of titrant, which is Ag plus, and that will form the primary layer. Since it is having a positive charge, it will attract the negative charge ion, which is the indicator ion, fluorescent ion. And so, it is going to show a adsorbed indicator color. Like we have seen the reaction, it will show you the red color. Before, in solution, free fluorescent ion will give you yellow green color. After absorbing, it will show you the red color. So, what is the significance of this observation that the color of the adsorbed indicator is different than the unadsorbed which signals the completion of the titration. So this is the advantage of the adsorption indicator. And the last question, list the factors affecting the solubility of precipitate in solution and indicate the optimum conditions to lower the solubility. So we will see, first very important effect is common ion effect which you might have heard many times what is common ion effect and what is the effect of it on the solubility? It decreases the solubility of precipitate. So, for example, your uh, the AgCl which is in the solution of 0.1 molar of NaCl, it, the solubility of this AgCl will decrease than in the pure water because of the common ion effect. So, common ion effect decreases the solubility. Salt effect increases the solubility of precipitate if the electrolytes are present in large amount like you can see example barium sulfate if it is present in the presence of sodium nitrate will increase the solubility of this precipitate so to decrease the solubility to lower the solubility we should have we should minimize the amount of electrolytes next factor which affects the solubility is the ph or acidity so if H plus concentration increases, which competes with the metal ion for the precipitation, it increases the solubility. For example, oxalate ion combines with the acid ions to form the oxalic acid and so it increases the solubility. So if uh, H plus ion increases means if your pH is decreases, the solubility increases. Next is complexation effect. Now, if you have a complexation agent which react with the metal ion, then it increases the solubility. How? For example, addition of cyanide will dissolve the PPT due to the formation of silver cyanide complex, which is soluble. Temperature effect. Solubility will increase with temperature. We should keep in mind that precipitate occurs Better precipitation occurs in hot solution, but while filtering, the solution should not be hot if it is temperature dependent. Now, last factor is solvent effect. The solubility of most of the inorganic compounds decreases by the addition of organic solvents, such as if you add ethanol, methanol, acetone, then the solubility of precipitate decreases. So these are certain factors which affect the solubility. So if you have organic solvent, you can decrease the solubility. On maintaining the temperature, you can decrease the solubility. Again, you have to decrease the acidity to decrease the solubility, decrease the electrolyte amount to decrease the solubility and also if you increase the common ions, it decreases the solubility. So these are the factors of which you can lower the solubility. So hope you understood uh, all these factors and some concept uh, and problems of uh, precipitation titration which frequently comes for MSA chemistry students. Happy learning!